Your chapter on the invention of television focuses on Philo Farnsworth, who is not exactly a household word. No, he isn't, and I think he should be. It's a sad story, a life filled with disappointment. Before Farnsworth, there was television, uh, mechanical systems, employing rotating wheels with a spiral of holes in them, uh, scanning the picture line by line. A photocell behind the wheel would record the intensity of the light and transmit it. At the receiving end, uh, a modulated light behind an identical disc would then reconstitute the picture. Uh, Farnsworth realized that such a mechanical approach would never do. Uh, it, it, it was far too slow. In 1922, he came up with a, a brilliant electronic scheme which broke the picture down into lines and pixels at a much faster rate. And the surprise is that at that time he was a 15 year old high school student, uh, a farm boy in Idaho who had learned the basics of ele electronics and electrons uh, from discarded magazines. It took him six years and several rounds of uh, financing to make the system work and by today's standards the picture quality was very poor but one could recognize faces and they moved and Farnsworth got some uh, not notoriety in the papers and that's when things started getting wrong uh, David Sarnoff of RCA decided to get into television. He sent his man, uh, Vladimir Zvorekin, on a visit to Farnsworth in San Francisco. Farnsworth was a very trusting fellow and showed Zvorekin everything. Zvorekin went back to the East Coast with a running start and even used some of Farnsworth designs. Uh, from then on, it was the lone inventor with limited financing against the mighty RCA which had a virtual uh, monopoly in radio receivers. Uh, Farnsworth tried to compete for the next 10 years but eventually had to give up. The fight ruined his health. Uh, he had the problem that he just couldn't relax. He then came up with another idea, a nuclear reactor. In his work on TV he had learned to make finely focused electron beams and he thought he could use several of these beams to heat a small amount of radioactive material to the point where he could obtain a nuclear reaction. The idea was sound, uh, but he grossly uh, underestimated the effort required. There are now such reactors using related approaches, but their development cost several billion dollars and took large teams. Farnsworth attempted to do it all by himself again. Despite the fact that his health was steadily getting worse, he put everything he had into the development, even mortgaged his house. He died in 1971 without ever having achieved fusion.